Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as Film 4's Fright Fest 2012 kicks off with The Seasoning House. Tell us more about the story here. Um, it's about a young girl, Angel, who's deaf and is kidnapped from her hometown when um, the military invade her village and she's forced to work in this brothel owned by Kevin's character. Victor. Yeah, Victor. And because she has a facial disfigurement, she's not allowed to work as a being prostituted, so she has to look after the girls. And yeah, it's about the story within the brothel and what happens when things go wrong, really. That's pretty much it in a nutshell, yeah. Well, but, but for you as a, an actor, having to connect to a, a quite a, a grisly part, really, yeah. um, you're, you're farming out women, really, for prostitution. Yeah, yeah. How do you connect to some somebody like that? Well, I think you've just always got to find this. I mean, no, nobody's ever really two-dimensional. You just find all the things about them that, you know, I know this is going to sound really crazy, but almost sort of like lovable as well. There is something about your character that you have to love too. And so you do, that's why you get that dichotomy with this guy in this film that, you know, you're not quite sure what he feels about Angel or what he wants from and what is going on there. And so, you know, you get a bit baffled by that. I, well, I hope. I mean, I haven't seen the film yet. Yeah, but, no, so, um, yeah, um, you just do your homework. You just do your homework and you have to study, you know, and... And do you give your characters a backstory to allow them to then get to this point where they are now so you can take them forward, really? Yeah, definitely. Me and Paul together sat down and worked at Angel's backstory where she's been to get to, to the point where she's working in the brothel. Yeah. But, yeah. And is that the same for Well, yeah, and, and Sean and I had a backstory as well in the sense that we felt that we'd known each other when we were very young. We were boys that grew up in probably the same Bosnian village and, you know, he but he goes down one route and I go down another. And so those sparks, those internal sparks, we hope come out in the dialogue and the scenes that we have together as well. Yeah. And, and talking about dialogue, you're, you're deaf and, and mute and so very two very major senses. So for you as, as actors and performing, how do you then connect to one another and react to one another when, specifically yourself, your your yeah. fellow actor, yeah. It's not able to communicate. Yeah, properly. and it's tricky, and it's and it's a really hard thing to do. And and Rose has accomplished that brilliantly because that is it's tough, because there are noises on going around you on set and things are going on. And you know, Rose. And I'm not allowed Rose to react not, to any of them. And, and I'm not deaf. deaf. And she's not a mute. And so there's that. Everything had to be the, the right temperature had to be set on, on when we were yeah. filming, and I think we managed to get we, that. I think we did it. There was yeah. a lot of lip reading from yeah. between us two, kind yeah. of. And <laughs> I think yeah, we worked out what we were going to do in each yeah. scene before we yeah. did it. And, and, and does it allow you to, to um, the, the connect to the physicality of your part rather than having to concentrate on dialogue? Yeah, the physicality came quite naturally with the scenes we were doing, but um, yeah, there's, being deaf and mute, it was a. It was a challenge, but I always had kind of a thought of whatever Angel, if she could talk, would be saying in my head in order to kind of portray the, uh, the emotions that she was going through. Well, this is quite a grisly tale, isn't it? Yes, yes. It's um, quite a harrowing subject. It's something that, you know, a lot of people would be close to, but I think we've handled it sensitively and realistically. And, and for you, Sean, how do you then connect to a story like this that makes you want to be a part of it? Well, the, the first and foremost was the script. I mean, the script was is, is extraordinary and really confident. But it, I was there was many many things I was very very worried about. It's about the uh, about how to handle it. And I, when I knew when I because I've worked with Paul on several occasions, um, it was about it's st stepping the tenuous line between reality and and fantasy. And but. Uh, What's the harshest element is, of course, is reality is always worse in many respects. So the, the, the story is based on truisms. Um, and that's what's shocking about this movie is the perfunctory of violence and what humans are capable of doing to each other. So that's what I was interested in. And of course, working with Paul, who I've worked with in the past, but with a different hat on. So I was going to say, you've, as, you've, as you've worked together in the past, but you were, come from an, a prosthetics effect background. Yes. So how does it, you're obviously used to working with actors, but now what's it like directing actors? Oh, it's great. You know, so I, think I work with actors so much, I understand their frustrations, I understand how they like to work. I see it from the other side. So, you know, basically I wanted to give as much freedom, and I was lucky in getting my first choices. Sean was my first choice for Gorman, and we'd work together. I'd killed him quite a few times. in. Yeah. And, you know, I was so stoked to have him on board and, you know, it was, it was a great working relationship. And, and for you, do you like working with first-time directors? You worked with Dexter, of course, on yes, Wild no, Bill. I've, I've Is there something refreshing about that? You know, I do. I'm, 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 like I was just saying earlier on, I'm very honoured to be considered. But the thing is, with Paul, he's done 180 films. I mean, you know, 
um, in his in his sort of in his in his life. Anyway, he's been on set 180 times, so to be considered by first-time directors is a great honour. And there's something the reason why I love doing because you get the opportunity to work with talent, you know. And um, I'm a big believer in that. And I've been very lucky to always be considered by from Paul Anderson to Neil Marshall to, to Paul. And there's been this. Um, very honoured. Yeah. And obviously you're migrating to a, a different um, type of discipline. Uh, is it hard for you as a, as a filmmaker now to be considered as a director and get funding to get your, mate, your films made? Well, I mean, to ask you, we just finished this one. So I think there was a certain amount of, he's a prosthetics guy, is he going to make anything that's any good? So I think having an opening movie um, is certainly going to help. And with regards to, as you, as you touched upon, Sean, that it's, uh, it base, it's based on truth, do you have a social responsibility when you're making films like this? Very much so, very much so. And I think that we tread that very precarious line with responsibility. And of course, there's going to be haters out there because there's, it's a very difficult subject. But um, it's done with responsibility and awareness. So that's how I think we, we hope we please both parties the fans and the, and the haters. <laughs> and we're here at Fright Fest as well, so what does that mean to you guys? Bring it on. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so brilliant to be here. To be at the opening film at Fright Fest. It's like an absolutely sort of huge, a huge sort of section of the film fan base is people who are into fantastical film and they write about it and they're passionate about it. So for them to ask us to be here, Paul, come on. It's awesome. <laughs> Another dark film you've got here. Yeah, see, I keep being asked that actually. Is it something that I've chosen to do? I, Gravitating towards. I, well, I guess I do actually. I'm, you know, I like exploring the dark side. It's kind of interesting. Who really wants to play the sort of boring girlfriend in a romantic comedy? It's not really anything interesting in that. So, yeah, maybe it's it is quite planned. I didn't think it was, but I guess it is a little bit. What was it about this particular script that you that you really took to? Um, really, that I very quickly realised that Paul had an incredible sort of ability to deal with a very sensitive subject um, in quite a unique way by it being incredibly horrific to watch so appealing to horror fans but not being gratuitous you know telling a very important story so you you leave feeling it's very thought-provoking it's an important story to tell and I think you know, there, should, there needs to be more horror like that. Um, it's touching people on an emotional level, really. Yeah, but very much so. Um, it's, a, it, you know, it's a subject matter that is incredibly important for people to be aware of. Um, you know, it's happening all over the world. It's disgusting. I mean, it's the bottom of what humankind seems to be capable of. Um, and I think this, this story is a little bit of a sort of fantasy in the sense that it's the hope of one girl getting revenge, um, one tiny little girl finding her revenge and I think it's maybe a sort of seed of hope really that, that maybe people can come back and get the better of these disgusting animals, men, not all men obviously, these men. And Paul's a first time director, How, what's that whole process been like for you? Is, is it quite refreshing for you to work with people that are bringing a new passion to it? Oh definitely and I think for Paul you know, it's something he's wanted to do for a long time, but not because he wants to be famous, but because he's had these ideas that have been growing for a long time. And he's had to find the right moment where it's suddenly, you know, he's got the right thing. And he's doing it for all the right reasons. He has stories that he's burning to tell. Um, so I think it really shows in his work, you know, it's, it, there's nothing sort of glamorous about it. He has a story that he needs to tell. And he he's, was very, very focused. To work with him was amazing. He knew exactly what he wanted, and he knew how to get it. Um, so it was a real pleasure. I think he's, you know, got an amazing career ahead of him. Does that help because he's written or co-written the story as well that he connects to the material in such a different way? Yeah, definitely. Because he, um, I know how much research he did for this. You know, I mean, he read. He is so knowledgeable on the subject, um, which I think, you know, you have to be if you're telling such an important story you need to know what you're talking about. And I think it really comes across in the film. Well, it's all just completely sort of, you know, it's like a whirlwind. Um, it's such an honor to be part of it. Uh, I'm so pleased because, you know, Paul is a wonderful director. I think he's going places as, as a director. Um, and also, I think it's a film, uh, you know, with a, a very strong message, a story that needs to be told as well. Yeah. It's quite a grisly tale, isn't it? Yeah. It's a very grisly, as you say, tale. Um, it's very brutal. Um, 
that you know it's about the horrors of war, human trafficking, um, what happens to these girls is just beyond horrific. Um, and I think that the the genre itself is is a great is 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 the perfect genre to tell the story because of the brutality of it. Um, so yeah. What kind of preparation did you have to do yourself to, to bring to the role? Um, well, I have um, a very uh, grueling fight scene, so um, a lot of um, stunt uh, practice um, and uh, you know stage fighting, um, coaching. Um, I also always enjoy reading a little bit about you know what the film is about and when it's set. And I mean, it's loosely set around the Balkan War, but. They didn't want to be too specific about. It. They didn't want it to be like a political drama, but um, but yeah. So I enjoy doing all that research and yeah. You're playing it again um, alongside Rosie. Uh, uh, well, Rosie stroke Angel, I should say, yeah. who's who's uh, deaf and mute. Yeah. So how is that for you as a, an actor to respond to her yeah. when? I know it was quite. It was a bit confusing because at times I was like, Paul, I don't think this makes sense because. She, Rosie can't hear me and I don't understand sign language so so we had to sort of change it a little bit because you sort of like don't think about that it's like I don't I don't you know Alexa doesn't know how to do sign language or understand sign language but then we got it in the end I think I think they actually cut a couple of lines because it didn't make sense but yeah and what did you take away with you from from making this film really um, well I, it was nice to walk away knowing a little bit more about that period in history um, it was not long ago, you know, we all forget that it was, yeah, it was very recent. And also, you know, discovering friends of mine who lived through, you know, Serbian friends and Croatian friends, who I've never spoken to them about it and suddenly, you know, kind of um, talking to them about what happened is very, very disturbing, yeah. That's it from the world premiere of The Seasoning House. I'm Claire Bueno and you're watching Premier Scene.